Alright, so this is a suggestion via Patreon. The name of the video is uh, Germany introduces new measures uh, to make their country less attractive to migrants. Alright, let's do it. L let's see where this takes us. Germany. They mow the lawns, sweep the streets, and clean the bathrooms of their living quarters. In Sao Lourla, in the state of Thuringia, 70 adult asylum seekers are now required to work up to four hours a day. It is the first district in Germany to introduce obligatory labor requirements, paying just 80 cents an hour. Asylum seekers cannot refuse this community service, even for those who are looking for a real job, like Osama and Mohammed. Hey, listen. That actually sounds like a great idea, I guess. I mean, we just give things to people for free. They love us. For mission is good. It's but not good. I want to work, to have a real full-time job. That would be nice. It's better than sleeping all day. But you know, here in Germany, the minimum wage is 13 euros an hour. We do this for 80 cents. <laughs> yeah, they're paying for your lodging though, right? You're getting food by from them, right? Like whatever they whatever they're giving you is enough. Okay. My you're there, not where you're uh, seeking, you know, asylum from, right? Students risk losing 180 euros of their monthly social benefits of 460 euros if they refuse the work, and the allowances are now issued on payment cards or apps that can only be spent locally. Okay. The card does not work everywhere. I often want to buy a coffee or some clothes in a neighboring town, and the payment doesn't go through. Cash withdrawals are impossible with the card, and bank transfers within Germany and internationally are blocked. Guys, I'm sorry, but what I'm hearing isn't that crazy. Right? You, you enter into someone else's country, right? Um, they are keeping you there, right? They're saying you can stay for a little while, right? Uh, they're also now paying almost 500 euros. It's probably like um, maybe $560 or so, uh, right, give or take, right? Um, and then they say you have to work mandatory four hours and we'll give you 80 cents for that, basically, an hour. Um, and then you yet, you know, while you're basically complaining that uh, uh, the minimum wage in Germany is 13 euros, bro, you, they're giving you free money to be there, along with paying for your lodging. You really can't complain that much in this instance. Um, but I think we need to kind of uh, come up with a couple of these things here, okay? Um, you should not be able to send the money that we're giving you back to, to uh, wherever you're from, guys. Advocates of the scheme argue that migrants often send the financial aid they receive from the state back home. Yeah, that's called remittance, guys. And, and this is what a lot of um, uh, migrants that are coming to the United States of America specifically do. Um, we are absolutely funding other countries' GDP based off of um, our current migrant crisis. Yes, people coming in here, making money, sending it back to their country. Um, but all right. Conservative politicians in Thuringia hope the measures will make Germany less attractive to migrants. Frankly, we've reached a breaking point with the number of refugees. As council leader, it's also my role to show local people that it's not only the far right that can come up with solutions. And the Democratic parties can also tackle this under existing laws. The new system should be imposed across Germany by the end of the year. But regions facing big swings to the far-right AFD party in the September local elections have been the first to implement it. A few hundred kilometers away, in Brandenburg region, the election campaign is already in full swing. It's amazing to see what financial aid these migrants get, while pensions remain stagnant. Right. And that's a common thing, a common issue that uh, many Americans have with the migrant crisis in the United States of America in general, right? Uh, there are people who are absolutely suffering. There, there are homeless people everywhere, right? Uh, and none of these individuals are getting anywhere near the amount of assistance than, that people that have literally trespassed onto the land, let's say, um, are getting. 
Every Wednesday at the Golson Market, local councillor Hans Christoph Berndt meets his constituents, handing out unlimited sausages and cold drinks. Here, the far-right AFD party candidate is in his element, because immigration is the number one concern. Why does migration bother me? Because there are so many profiteers in our region. What's changed in recent years is that there are simply too many migrants. They have a completely different culture than we do. Hans Christoph Berndt questions the entire migration policy pursued by successive governments over the past decade. He thinks the new restrictions on asylum seekers don't go far enough. Never mind the war in Syria or the Taliban in Afghanistan, he thinks migrants should be sent home. Syria and Afghanistan are not countries in crisis, particularly not Afghanistan. The same applies to Turkey, where large numbers of asylum seekers come from. Send them home. That's what we're campaigning for. Bro, first of all, you need to work on defining uh, asylum probably a little bit better, right? Uh, and obviously, once you're able to actually successfully define the concept of what an asylum seeker actually has the uh, ability to kind of say, right? If they do not say these specific things, if you hear anything about any type of economic migrancy, then obviously you know these individuals are not coming specifically for um, you know, their country persecuting them. They're coming to basically work there and remove that income from your country and send it to another country through remittance. That's it. Um, if these are not actual asylum seekers or any type of refugees, then they obviously shouldn't be coming through an asylum seeking program. It is a viewpoint that is becoming increasingly normalized. Responding to the growing influence of the extreme right, some conservative politicians want to limit asylum applications to 60,000 per year until 2030. For groups that work for the integration of migrants, it is a worrying trend. On the ground, their concern is palpable. This anti-migrant atmosphere is scary. We feel it on the street, we see it on campaign posters. Many people who arrive are asking us if the far right is already in power and if they should be worried. The regional head for integration in Thuringia says the hardening of refugee policies above all reflects a shift of the political debate towards the extreme right. We're dealing with politicians who are giving in to a certain group of people to show they're firm and that by setting up this credit card system, they're depriving migrants of cash, which is a good thing, so money stays local. But these measures are populist, playing politics at the expense of migrants. She has a point, though. That's valid. Her, her, her statements are completely valid. Germany remains the main destination for asylum seekers in Europe. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you guys have the most money in Europe. And that's why. Right? Because you have the most money over in that, that pocket, right? Everyone's gonna flock to you. So how do you make it less attractive? Right? With more than three hundred thousand arrivals last year, Berlin is now studying the possibility of processing these applications outside of EU borders. Guys, the world I think is is kind of having to deal with a lot of this these issues here. Now, keep this in mind here. Obviously, wealth uh, specifically is um, accumulated, right, in a couple of pockets around the world. And if you notice, all of those pockets are currently being bombarded by migrants. Um, that's just what it is, right? Because the people that are outside of the pockets of wealth, uh, they're not they're not making the amount of money, guys, right? that, that they would like to, at least. Um, it's not that every single place that individuals are coming from are war-torn. Um, it almost doesn't make any sense for the asylum to be the way it is, um, like even in the EU. To keep this in mind, guys, I live half a year in the south of Spain, uh, every single year, right? And so um, I'm aware of kind of fully of how people are getting into specifically uh, Europe, right? There's a, uh, a place in, in Morocco that, um, I guess it, it's Spain, but there's like a little pocket that's land that's that's completely locked out, but it's Spain, and people are jumping those borders. And all they have to really do is get into that. All they have to do is get past that fence. They're in Europe, even though they're still basically in Africa, right? And then they will have the ability to basically travel freely. Specifically, those who are coming from uh, West Africa. Now, in terms of East Africa, they're going through like Greece and um, things like that, guys. But 
Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy out there. I wouldn't say it's more crazy than what we experience in the United States of America. That's a no. It's not as crazy. Uh, not even close, actually. Right. Um, but it's crazy for them. Right. Scale. But all right, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. And I'd have to do think that um, some of these things, uh, you know, sound interesting, but not really. Um, I don't think that they they could be utilized for us, at least um, a great overwhelming majority of what was stated here. Um, but either way, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day. Thoroughly. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd, along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out. <laughs>